Well, it's really a, an integration of physical practices that are both active, a flow style that's alignment based, with holding poses longer on the floor, a yin style, to strengthen and bring vitality to all the systems of the body, the muscles and the bones, the ligaments and the organs. And so for me, my style insight yoga is a vehicle for developing insight into a healthy body, uh, open heart and a radiant mind. And I draw from the traditional teachings of yoga and from Buddhism, from Chinese medicine and from transpersonal or spiritual psychology. These are ways of describing the co-essential elements in any situation where there's elements of receptivity and elements of dynamic activity. And so our personality, some of us are more introverted, some of us are more extroverted, but we all have the capacity to respond and then to listen, to be reactive in a beneficial way and to be receptive in a vivid way so that receptivity is not dull and activity is not aggressive. So yin is a description of those that are more receptive and yang those that are more active. So these are rhythms in nature that are also in us. And so a yang practice in yoga terms is a practice where we are more active and the muscles are engaged and there's more rhythmic movement. And a yin time in our practice is when we're more receptive, we're quieter, we hold the poses longer, and so it's a more meditative or contemplative atmosphere. And the yin sides of our personality, which are more yielding and surrendered features, have an opportunity to blossom when we're in that mood of our practice that is more still. And the more directive, intentional practices bring up that kind of healthy will, that side of our personality that can envision something and then create it. So I'm interested in having a balanced capacity to draw from both sides of my nature. I love being alone and quiet, and I love being in community and active. So my yoga practice is one in which there's yang elements and there's yin elements. And some days I alternate doing one and then the other, and some days maybe I'm already so busy, like teaching and traveling, that it's really appropriate that in my practice life it's more yin, because the rest of the day is so yang. Other days, like when I was writing this book, Insight Yoga, I'm on the computer, my body's in one position a lot of the days, so I needed a movement practice to move the energy, but then I needed a meditation, which is a yin practice, because my mind had been moving all day. So the mind can sometimes be very yang while the body's yin, or vice versa. So it's all about what is an excess right now, and so how can my practice be the ingredients to bring me more towards equilibrium? Am I overly yin right now or overly yang? Overly active, so I'm going to want to bring some stability. Or if I'm overly contemplative and still, then I'm going to want to excite the energy a little more. I think what we have today is twofold. We have the benefit of the technological era, so like we are now here. Nobody in Germany could have related to my teachings before without coming to California, where I'm from. So that's a benefit. You can go online and get the most profound teachings from all the wisdom traditions. You can't necessarily understand them, so in a way they're self-secret, which means that even though they're out there, they won't actually blossom 
until somebody is ready to understand them. So we're exposed in a way we never were before. This can be extra distracting as well because there's so much to choose from. You're not just going to the master down the street that your ancestors were a part of the lineage. Now you're choosing from a plurality of interesting paths. So like life, with the incredible array of choices on how to spend your day and then your career and your choices of friends and family, I think that today we, we can really benefit from taking personal time to practice and grow a sense of inner intimacy so that the complexity of life doesn't draw us away from our center it actually can be integrated into a sense of inclusiveness. Because one of the risks, I think, when there's so much diversity is uh, dogmatism and fundamentalism can arise to defend one's special, unique position. And I think this is a direct sign that we've moved away from our true wisdom. And that uh, our our human capacity for tolerance and for inclusiveness is where the genuine paths are taking us. And the end or expanded or evolved view of all of the traditional religions are taking us towards love. And that expresses itself in compassion and inclusiveness. Mm -hmm. And in order for that not to become tempered with aggressiveness, we need a daily practice. <clears throat> and Metta Journeys arose out of a recognition of how privileged my life has been. And particularly as a woman, being in a culture that allows for equal rights, and a sense of protection. I felt that these kinds of gifts, stemming from the culture I've been raised in and the practices I've developed, are something that has given me a wealth of support inside me, and then how might I expand that support to people who don't have those same privileges? And one of the uh, Inspirations was a woman named Zainab Salbi, who is the designer and CEO of Women for Women International. We spoke with her and she said, well, we could bring people to regions where they could have an intimate relationship to the women that Women for Women are helping. And so instead of just being philanthropists who write a check, that they could have an intimate contact with their sisters. So we took people on a retreat and we went ahead of time and the yoga teachers taught the staff of Women for Women how to re-nourish themselves so that they could continue to help these women on a regular basis without being depleted. And so now there's continuance of retreats and different yoga teachers are going. I was really the visionary and the one who put it in place and went on the first retreat. And now I'm more of a someone who gives suggestions and Mata Journeys has its own CEO and its own life now which I'm so thankful for because I think it's really helping women support other women. Awesome.